Welcome everyone. Today we will introduce physics informed sampling procedure for reduced total models. Let's remind ourselves that a reduced total model can be built using simulation data collected for several sample points of the parameter space. For example, for the Poisson problem we have looked at in the previous tutorial, we sampled the frequency of the sinusoidal function at kappa equals 1.0, 1.1, and 1.2. Then used this simulation data to build a reduced to the model, which is used in turn to predict the solution at a new parameter point, for example, kappa equals 1.15, with a speed up of 7.5 and relative error of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 4. However, the choice of these sampling points were arbitrary. We could certainly choose other other combinations such as kappa equals 1.01, 1.11, and 1.21, or some other combinations, right? However, we can easily see that the choice of these sampling points affect the performance of reduced total models. As you increase the number of sampling points, the accuracy of the ROM will increase, but it will become slow because the size of the reduced total model increases. This observation naturally leads to an important question, that is, what are the optimal sample points that guarantee some desirable accuracy with minimal number? Do they exist? If they exist, can we find them? If we cannot find them, can we at least find near optimal sample points? We will answer this question by introducing a physics-informed sampling procedure using greedy algorithm. To describe a greedy procedure, let's say we would like to find the near optimal set of kappa values whose reduced total model achieves a relative error less than 1% for every kappa value between 0.5 and 3. To achieve this, a greedy procedure starts with a reduced total model that is built by simulation data at one point in the parameter space. Let's say we choose the midpoint, that is kappa equals 1.75. Then one can compute a relative error of the reduced total model at points that cover the parameter space of kappa between 0.5 and 3. Because we have built the reduced total model at kappa equals 1.75, it will be the most accurate at that point. And the accuracy will deteriorate as we go far away from kappa equals 1.75. The greedy algorithm will find where the maximum relative error occurs, which is depicted as a red point here, then update the relative errors for the current reduced total model. The accuracy around 2 0.99 is significantly improved due to the addition of the simulation data there. Then the greedy algorithm repeats the process by finding the next maximum relative error point, which is depicted again by the red point here. Then add the simulation data at that point and update the reduced total model and relative error distribution until all the relative errors become less than 1%. The greedy algorithm will not give the optimal set of sampling points, but but it would give near optimal one. Now we have a problem here. The relative error is defined as the norm of the difference between full order model and reduced order model solutions divided by the norm of the full order model solution. This implies that the full order model solution needs to be computed. This will make the whole greedy procedure impractical. Therefore, we need to replace the relative error with something else that can efficiently measure the accuracy of the reduced total model. An efficient alternative is called an error indicator. An efficient error indicator must have two characteristics for a successful greedy procedure. First, it must be very easy to evaluate. For example, it should not involve full auto model solution. Otherwise, the whole greedy procedure will be impractical. Second, the error indicator must be strongly correlated with the actual error measure. For for example, the error indicator value must increase as the corresponding relative error increases, but this is ideal case. We do not always get this perfect correlation. Sometimes we get this kind of correlation where this region gives false negative, meaning that 
the indicator is saying the accuracy is bad, although the actual accuracy is good. This is actually okay because it simply adds some unnecessary sampling points during the greedy algorithm. And the final set of sampling points will still guarantee the desirable accuracy. However, sometimes we may get this kind of correlation where this region gives false positive, meaning that the actual accuracy can be bad, although the indicator tells us that it is not. This is really bad because the final set of sampling points determined by this error indicator may not guarantee the desirable accuracy at all. So it would be nice for you to check this correlation first before you deploy the error indicator in the greedy procedure. Now, what would be a good error indicator for the reduced total model of solving Poisson equation? To answer these questions, we need to derive an error bound. Because the Poisson problem is linear and time independent, the finite element discretization gives the following linear system of equations to solve. Using this, we can define a residual function also of u equals f minus au. If we plug the full the model solution u into this residual function, then we get zero residual theoretically. On the other hand, if we plug the reduced total model solution to this residual function, we would not get zero residual because the reduced total model solution is approximate. If you subtract these two equations, you get minus R of u tilde equals minus A of u minus u of tilde. Inverting A matrix and negate both sides give us that A inverse times also of u tilde equals u minus u of tilde. Note that u minus u tilde is error term, and we will denote it as e. Then this gives us a inverse times also of u tilde equals e. Here using Hilder's inequality and the equivalence relation between L1 and L2 norm, we can bound the error norm by the norm of a inverse times the norm of residual. This error bound tells us that the error of the reduced total model solution can be bounded by the product of some positive scalar value that is the norm of the inverse matrix of A and the residual norm. Because the norm of the inverse matrix of A is constant, this bound shows the correlation between the error norm and the residual norm. For example, if we plot the relative error and residual norm of the reduced total model solutions for Poisson problem, we observe very strong correlation. Furthermore, computing residual norm is a lot cheaper than the solving the full order model. First of all, it does not require a full order model solution. The number of floating point operations for the residual norm computation is big O of 2 and K, where N is the full order model size and K is the bandwidth of the matrix A. While the number of floating point operations for solving full order model solution is big O of nk square. Therefore, the residual norm is a perfect error indicator for Poisson equation. Plus, the residual norm is a physics-informed error indicator because it uses the discretized system of linear equations that represents underlying physics law. If you use Libram to apply the physics-informed greedy algorithm with residual norm error indicator for Poisson problem and try to build reduced total model with a target relative error less than 1%, the greedy algorithm will sample these eight parameter points to build reduced total model. As you can see, this reduced total model achieves a target relative error of less than 1% almost everywhere. Except for this region though, the relative error is slightly above 1% here because we are using an error indicator for efficiency, not the actual relative error. All right, we have introduced a physics-informed sampling procedure to build a reduced total model that achieves a desirable accuracy over the whole parameter domain. We took advantage of physics-informed error indicator to accelerate the greedy procedure. The greedy algorithm is implemented in Libram, so you can apply it yourself. Please find the command line options for the greedy algorithm in the description below. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. Please visit the webpage for the Libram below and try to get familiar with the reduced total model and apply it to your applications. Next time, we we will go over how to build reduced to the model for time-dependent problems. All right, see you next time.